And welcome back to Comic Frontline, everybody. I am Brant Fowler, a.k.a. The Gonzo Goose, back with you for another review. This is an all-new, all-different Marvel number one review. We're talking Amazing Spider-Man number one, written by Dan Slott with uh, art by Giuseppe Camincoli. And there are uh, several backup stories. This is an oversized um, story with little backup stories that lead into some of the other uh, new Spider titles coming out. Um, this month and, and next. So, um, as you guys know, this was a different direction for the Amazing Spider-Man. Everything post Secret Wars, we know all about that. Um, and we know that Parker has kind of embraced this whole Parker Industries um, job and persona of his. It's gone global. And in this issue, we find out that he has different divisions. He has an East Coast, West Coast, European division. Uh, European division, Sajani is running. Um, West Coast is uh, the guy, who, his name escapes me, from uh, Horizon Labs. He's, he's running that division, and Peter's got the East Coast. So he's going to be traveling all over. And, you know, we see him, of course, we see him in action as Spider-Man. We learn that Spider-Man is the public bodyguard for Peter Parker. And uh, Peter Parker actually calls himself a poor man's Iron Man, which was kind of weird. So Johnny didn't like the whole thing. Um, but it, it was a very interesting build-up to this uh, this new era in Spider-Man. You know, it was like he he's taking a mid-level salary, uh, so he's not even giving himself a proper salary for his position. He's giving himself a mid-level salary, and uh, he's doing this to help people. He's come up with this tech that allows you to access the internet uh, from anywhere using a, a wristwatch kind of thing, a, kind of a gauntlet, a bracelet kind of thing, um, which is funny. It's, it's very similar to something that they did in uh, the TV show Continuum, only that was a health thing, uh, but similar tech. And um, so that's his, that's his whole idea. He's, he's wanting to keep the profit, I mean, keep the profits low because it's not a profitable thing, it's, it's to help people, it's to get it out there so the cost is low. And that's, again, that's why he's, oh, poor man's Tony Stark, whatever, and he's kind of embraced that whole thing, which I kind of like. He also calls out Sajani um, on something. He, he kind of lets her know that, hey, he knows what's going on, what she's been up to, and that it better not happen again. And for the first time since uh, Peter Parker has been back in his own body and been part of Parker Industries, he actually seems confident and competent he knows exactly what he's doing and um you know what his whole purpose is with everything we also see that uh, at the beginning he's teaming up with mockingbird and he's kind of working as a liaison with shield he's giving them all their tech and stuff and i love to see these two their, their banter back and forth uh, was really really uh, nicely done um He's making his typical jokes, and Mockingbird's like, "You're dumb." <laughs> She's like, oh, ha, ha, you know." She she kind of laughed off at uh, something he said, and it's like, "That's just so stupid, so lame, or whatever." I, I don't know what the exact joke was, um, but it was it was really funny. Their dynamic together was really uh, enjoyable to, to to read and to experience to see these two uh, working together like that. And, um, you know, just taking out uh, the bad guys. It's this Zodiac, um, Zodiac something. Uh, they, they make another appearance later on. They're kind of, attack. they go to attack Parker. That I guess they're going to be new villains uh, for Parker to deal with. Um, doesn't seem like they're that much trouble, though. But, yeah, it, it was something that Parker was saying. He, it wasn't even a joke. He was saying something that he thought was poignant. And he was like, I try to save everyone I can. And she's like, did you practice that speech in the mirror? It was just hilarious. And uh, we know that Sajani is working with Anna Marcone, um, Marconi and uh, Anna Marie Marconi. And something's going on behind the scenes that we're not sure of. Uh, it, this, is, this happens after that talk that Peter has with Sajani, so we know she's still got something up her sleeve, and we don't know what that is, so you can't quite trust her. Um, the cool thing about uh, Peter Parker trying to keep his identity a secret now is that he has Hobie Brown, the Prowler, going around masquerading as him, and there was one point where he jumps in, and he's just, he's not used to this kind of fighting, and he kind of gets his butt handed to him a little bit. Um, so, you know, there was just a lot of interesting elements and layers to this story that I really enjoyed. I thought the art was fantastic, uh, you know, the way the story uh, was paced and everything 
just the, all the different um, elements of this story with the Zodiacs and with the whole shield uh, liaison thing and the whole Parker industry side of it with the, with the press uh, conference and also with uh, Sajani, uh, that whole thing going on. Uh, you know, there's all these different moving uh, parts in this story and it's going to come together beautifully in the end, I think, uh, just the way that it's, that it's laid out here. And then we learn um, who's with Marconi in, in that robot. I, I think we already knew that, but we see Doc Ock's face. Minor spoiler there. Um, I, you know, I'll leave that as, as it is. We had five backup stories. There was The Last Time by Peter David and Will Sliney. There was Breaking Bad by Robbie Thompson and Stacey Lee. Uh, what to Expect by Dennis Hopeless and Javier Rodriguez. Church and Quantum State by Mike Costa and David Baldion. And The Cellar by Dan Slott and Christos Gage. The first one of these um, <clears throat> excuse me, was a Spider-Man 299 lead-in as Miguel decides that he's becoming what he's trying to prevent. He's kind of crossing that line. So um, it, it's kind of interesting what happens at the end of the story that ties into Amazing Spider-Man, ties into uh, Parker Industries and everything. It's, it's kind of like there's a tie uh, to Parker Industries throughout all of this, which is kind of cool. Um, so there's that little tie there at the end that was kind of a neat little twist and we see that there's going to be a different direction for Spider-Man 2099 which has me curious. I want to give that away uh, but I, I thought it was a really interesting uh, little kind of kind of a different way to go with the character. Uh, the next one was uh, Spider-Woman as she's six months pregnant she's talking to Carol while she's beating up these random guys um, and there's a callback to them later on in one of the other uh, backup stories. But, you know, she's talking about how, you know, oh, all that stuff they say, the swollen ankles, all that stuff, the cravings, all that's real. And, uh, you know, everybody's all nice to me, and I've worked on this grump face for so long, and now people just pay attention to me like crazy, and it gets on my nerves. Um, actually, that was the third story. The next one, um, but that one was a really funny one, too. And, uh, you know, I, I love the way that that played out. And then there's, uh, you know, the, the three guys that she beats up, again, is a... Uh, they call back to it later on but before that one was the silk one and throughout this whole thing silk is like chasing down these bad guys and she's talking about this parker industries tech that they stole and she's trying to retrieve it it's it's the uh, goblin uh gang as the dogs go crazy and um she keeps talking about her boss her boss wants her to do this and of course the, her boss is not parker it's black cat so you know Coming in a Silk number one, we could see where that partnership is going, what's going on with that. Then we get the Spider Woman one, and then the last one. Uh, actually, no, there's two more. There's a. No, there's three, and there's several. I don't know. There, there was a 1602 one. Uh, it was the Web Warriors, and they travel back to 1602 because that that Spider-Man has been killed, so they have, they're have they going throughout the web. But something interesting happens, happens at the end of this because they may not have gone back into the world web alone. So that was really interesting. Uh, we saw a Miles Morales one um, where he's kind of... He, he's not your typical Spider-Man, and it's not what people are used to, and he catches a couple of criminals himself, and uh, he's trying to just... I guess he's just trying to find his place in, the, in all this. But, oh, that's what it was. This is the same one I was talking about. This is the callback because the criminals that he catches, we see those criminals along with the outfits of the criminals that Spider-Woman caught. And uh, they're all taken to the new prison that is rebuilt on um, the island. I can't... Riker's Island? Um, not Riker's Island. Well, the... Jeez. Um, I can't think of what the prison was called. Anyway, the island. Now it's a compound underneath the island down in a, in a bunker like thing and they're taken there and we see that's where all the spider villains are ending up but I'm not going to give this away but there is a huge cliffhanger at the end of this story that ties into something that was happening in Secret Wars now if you guys read Renew Your Vows you might know where I'm going with that and that's all I'm going to say but it's very interesting what's happening to these super villains in this new prison and who's in control of them and how that's going to play out and what that's going to mean for Spider-Man and the whole Spider-Family. I thought this was a fantastic first issue. I was on the fence because I was like, how are they going to do this whole Parker Industries thing? It's going to change the dynamic of the character. And yeah, it does in a way, but in a very good way. I feel like for the first time, um, well, 
okay, I can't say for the first time because Renew Your Vows was very classic Peter Parker Spider-Man, but I think for the first time in the main continuity, Dan Slott has really got his uh, finger on the pulse of who Spider-Man is, who Peter Parker is, and I think he's kind of embodied that in a different way. He's moved him in a different direction, but it's a very interesting story, and it seems like the entire Spider, the entire Spider-Man family side of the Marvel Universe is tied together in a really cohesive and neat way that we're going to see play out throughout these books. And I, I'm telling you, I really thoroughly enjoyed this book. I'm giving this one a 5 out of 5 stars. Uh, hands down, I love this book. I thought it was fantastic. I love the direction. I love the art. I love everything going on on all these books. And there was a couple of those Spider-Man uh, you know, family books that I was kind of on the fence about or wasn't really going to try. And now I'm curious about those as well. And I, I might just try all of them. So... Hats off to uh, Marvel, Dan Slott, and the whole crew that put together this gorgeous book. Five out of five stars for Amazing Spider-Man, number one, part of all new, all different Marvel. So that wraps up this review. Check out all the other reviews. We'll be reviewing, uh, I believe, all of the uh, new number ones from all new, all different Marvel um, this month and next month as they come out. And uh, check out all the other content. Tune in Tuesdays around 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time for the live show. Sorry I didn't make it this week. I was uh, very sick. I'm much better now, so I will, I will um, hopefully be able to be on next week and, and going forward um, as well. And, of course, check out all the other content. Check out ComicFrontline.com for more. For my stuff, check out Zone4Podcast.com. Uh, Chris and I do a bunch of shows over there as well as the regular Zone4 uh, cast and all the shows we do over there. You can check Dark Avenger C86 for more of those podcasts like the 123 podcast and the Chris and Brandt show and stuff like that. LastNumberPress.com. Um, <clears throat> I've got a convention coming up in a couple weeks. We'll have a new um, preview book out for that one, Chocolate Pancake Ninja. Check out LastNumberPress.com for more info on that and we'll be doing a live show probably in a, in a few weeks. Um, on the Last Ember Press channel. But that's it for now. Thank you guys for watching. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you thought of this issue, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.